a little happy. Oh, I didn't have ice cream. I was so hungry. You're not supposed to eat ice cream. I like hungry. ice cream. Okay. Hi. Hi. Do you like ice cream? I love ice cream. I absolutely I just... love ice cream. I'm a sweet I... tooth. Okay. See, I just had an ice cream. I had what? What do you call just... this? Like a ice cream uh, stick uh... bar things. What do we call it? Stupid thing. Oh, like I a, love uh... them. Like a um... like a revel or a revel or a fudgio or yeah, whatever. Yeah, 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 we yeah, call yeah. them something different in Australia. I, I the first word that came to my mind was paddle pop sticks, but I don't think you have that here. <laughs> no, we don't. no, that doesn't. No, that doesn't ring a bell. That, no. that doesn't ring a bell. No, no, no. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah. but I get it. Ice cream on a stick. We're on I, the same that's, page. Uh, well, yeah. I, apparently, I've been all here all my life, and I still don't know what to call it. So don't don't worry. About it. <laughs> but I love it. I, it's the ones oh with gosh. the crunchy, the nuts on the outside. And, yeah. Oh, yes, so they're nice. the best. Thanks a lot. Like now, I want ice cream. Now Lunch. you're craving ice cream, okay. right? Sure. <laughs> we came on five minutes early. You had time to go get an ice cream. Should yeah. <laughs> Oh, I'm, I really enjoyed that. I might have to go have another one after. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Long I'm time good, I see. Good. I know. I know. It's been, it's been a whole chunk of years, I think. It has. Right? It really has. And yeah. it feels like yesterday. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. 2020 How long have you known each other? Blink. Oh my gosh. I don't, uh, 2018 maybe. Yeah, 2017, 20, 2017 maybe yeah, actually. 2017. Most of the way three, four years. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But yeah. but we haven't like I think we've interacted a couple of times in before. Yeah. Yes. And then I bought some stuff from you, which I yes, really love. You did. Yeah. Thank <laughs> really, you really for really that. Love. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. No, I love it. I love it. Goal. I love it. And I love we, what you guys are doing. Had... Oh, thank, oh you. thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So nice. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. You guys have inspired me. I have. Oh started oh, wow. to listen to your podcast and listening to all the cool people that you have has just inspired me to get back to it um a little bit of trepidation coming onto your podcast because it's like oh my god so many successful people what will i talk about <laughs> oh come on oh, listen come you're with on. us man you take a look yeah. look at the bar we've set the bar no, so low like very low <laughs> everybody looks and, great uh, and you are you're gonna be a rock star cool oh thank you appreciate on. that <laughs> yeah so, so Kenny, I, I met, it's Ave, right? Yes, Ave. Ave. Yeah. yeah. So Ave. I, I met Ave on, at uh, Colleen Imri's event at the Nooks. So they had a, they had a start of, you remember Colleen was on, she's the one that during the pandemic yeah. decided to open like six doors, oh, okay. like yeah. real I'm stores. Saying, I'm thinking the event. All over the, the place. Event. Yeah, 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 yeah. So Colleen, Colleen had a bunch of these events where they had founders come on and then uh, they, she had a, a couple of like retail folks, um, you know, do some judging and then and then help out a bit like a like a lightweight dragon stand, if you will. Right. Yeah. Um, exactly. And so we we I met Ave there, um, and it was she's like amazing. Like she does really oh, cool stuff. So you saw her you saw her thing on my laptop, and that's that's from her, right? So I, I saw the laptop, um, and then I yeah. went online the other day because just so you know, Ave, it's not for anything i just forget who the hell we're talking to half the time yeah so i try <laughs> once in a blue moon to to look ahead and say uh, you know maybe one time i'll actually know who we're talking to before yeah, we get on yeah. the show because no, half like the it. time i have I like no clue it. right no fat format it's free flowing it's oh, very candid no. you know it's very very casual so I love Sometimes it. a bit of a train wreck, but for the most part, not too bad. So we'll, yeah. we'll take the compliment. Thank you. But I did see your stuff and I think you do some pretty cool stuff. So Thank I was actually you. kind of curious to see, you know, how it goes. How do you do this? Uh, that's, that's pretty slick, man. That's good. Yeah, thank you. It's all been kind of a trial and error, you know, over the past five years, four or five years that I've been doing this. Um, and like I said, a bit of trepidation coming online here, speaking with you guys, but it really is a great segue mm -hmm. to like, because I have been a little bit on a six month hiatus from my Instagram. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm loving that you invited me on because I'm able now to post online, be like, hey, you know, come listen and hear from my own words why I've been on a six month hiatus yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. you know yeah. so thank you for inviting me um yeah you got it you know i think it's very valuable for people to be able to hear other entrepreneurs and small businesses stories because it's a way to really engage and let people know that you know what you're not alone you might fail a hundred yeah. a thousand times over but you're not alone there are a bunch of other makers and hustlers and small business owners out there that are really 
uh, in the same boat as you. I'm glad you say that because yeah. that is the intent of it, right? Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. some, I, to be honest with you, because it's we're pretty selfish that way. It's really more for us. Yeah, I, we just like really hearing stories. We love to hear what people have done, why they've done, whether they failed or succeeded, because you can learn on you know you can learn something from anything, right? Yeah. So we, I exactly. think we both get a kick out of, yeah, just the attempt sometimes, and yeah, and sometimes it doesn't work. Well, whatever, you try again or try something different. Yeah. So. I, yeah, I'm glad yeah. you say that because that's yeah. that is the that that's been the intent of this is the beginning. I oh, mean, Phil, good. you probably should introduce Ave. I, I so at least I we can get should. going and then because we can see what the heck she's doing and tell us yeah, the story. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, <laughs> so we're on with um, Ave, and Ave runs Ave Maria Bell, which is uh, it's it's an Etsy store primarily, correct? Well, correct. I'll, I'll introduce you, and then you can correct me because I'm sure I'm going to get some of this wrong. Sure. Um, it is. It's super eye-catching. So if you go to Etsy and you look up Ave Maria Bell, and we'll, we'll make sure we leave the link in the podcast notes, she does some wonderful, wonderful artwork. Um, you know, there's some like laser etched um, sketches of Toronto. Um, I think there's some, there's a bunch of cities in here like Skyline Prints from Europe, um, South Africa, um, Austra Australia, mm -hmm. uh, and, and, uh, everything from picture frame stuff to cards to, um, I have one um, that I'll also post the picture uh, when we post this um, podcast, but I, I actually carry the Toronto skyline that, that Abby did on my laptop. The laptop. Um, yeah, which I think is just uh, wickedly cool. But we all so, talked about it at the house yeah, when you were here. Right? Yeah, Everybody yeah, thought, wow, that's, yeah. pretty, oh, that's pretty nice. cool. I yeah, love yeah. that. I love yeah. that. So, so yeah, so, so, and, uh, and, and I did, we met, uh, we met at Colleen Imry's event at the yes. Nooks, uh, 2017. Colleen was also on this, uh, podcast, uh, a little while back as well. Um, but, uh, you know, we met and, and, you know, kind of sort of stayed in contact, but I just really love Ave stuff, right? So I have, I have, um, there's a, a bunch of photos that I actually took w in your long sleeve t-shirt as well. Oh, nice. um, yeah, because I've got the long, the black long sleeve with the Toronto, the white Toronto skyline. So yes, I have that shirt as well. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, anyway, so so we thought, um, you know, she's just doing some really cool stuff. And so what's we the web page? We it's it's Ave Maria. So Ave Maria Bell. Yeah. Dot com. Yeah. yeah Ave, so it's, I it's, love it's, I love the Ave Maria. It's that's, a hybrid awesome. of my first name and my last name, actually. So my first name is Ave Maria. And my last name is Abella Nosa. So I kind of just put the two words together. You know what? It's super unique. There's probably not another Ave Maria Bell anywhere out there. So No, Ave Maria might be a very common saying in Catholicism. Uh, Maria, yes. For sure. Yes. We, I, we grew up with <laughs> Ave Maria. Not no. necessarily the bell part, to your point. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's cool. awesome. So, that's cool. so that's, so Ave's on the show. Um, do you want to, this is kind of, this is the part where you take over and you can kind of tell us sure. what you want to tell us. So yeah. Sure. I mean, I guess I can give you like a quick backdrop of like exactly yeah. how I got started with Ave yeah. Maria Bell Designs. Yeah. Um, I moved to Canada in 2014 from Australia. So I grew up in Australia and I've always wanted to live abroad. So I just came here 2014, no expectations. Thought I'd be here on a one year off kind of gap year, take a break from my architecture career, actually. I graduated from a master of architecture. No way. Uh, yeah, was in there wow. for full time, uh, yeah. three years part time, two years full time, worked in there as a student architect. Um, kind of became bored with this kind of uh, idea that I would climb the corporate ladder and eventually become an architect, maybe open my own firm, kind of had this like, you know, I'm sure a lot of people out there have this idea when they're at university or these aspirations to climb the corporate ladder. Uh, but I decided, you know what, I'm going to go take that gap year. You know, I never did it at school. I'm just going to take a break. So I came here 2014, really just fell in love with the city. And there's something about living in a city where you know absolutely nobody and just thinking hey you know what I'm just going to start from scratch there's no expectations you know uh, uh, my parents are on the other side of the world <laughs> <laughs> there's only so much yelling they can do over exactly the phone by text yeah, yeah. I got Asian parents right yeah yeah 
Yeah, uh, nice, so to, nice to stay away from the folks. Yeah. <laughs> Old school folks, um, exactly. they're, 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 they're problematic. That's why my kids are away right now. <laughs> but you know what? It's just really about letting go of those expectations, not right. just that your parents have created for you, but maybe that you've created for yourself. Because I've like I've always thought, you know, I love art. I love drawing. I love creating something from nothing. Wouldn't it be great to like put that out there to the world, but never really doing it? So when, when I came to Toronto, I just thought, hey, you know what, I'll give it a go. But I'll tell you what triggered it. It wasn't really like um, a definitive thought like, oh, I'm going to sell my art. I had just drawn the Toronto skyline on my bedroom wall because I saw it, you know, I lived downtown Toronto at uh, Fort York in Spadina mm -hmm. area down yep. south. You can see CN Tower yeah. straight out my bedroom window and decided, you know what, I'm going to draw the Toronto skyline on my bedroom wall. And coming from an architecture background, I was really inspired by Japanese architecture and in particular, the Japanese Soji screen. So I had that in my bedroom and I had the CN Tower at my bedroom wall. And I just drew it inspired by this kind of minimalistic uh, black block lines on a white textured background. Uh, posted it on Instagram and it kind of kind of went semi-viral and when I say semi-viral it just got shared in like Toronto community circles such mm -hmm. as Love Toronto, Streets of Toronto, mm -hmm. you know makers reposted it and it got like 2,000 likes, 200 comments, wow. people just DMing me and saying where can oh. I get this, can you paint this on my wall, you know and that's just when I realized that I had something worth sharing. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was kind of at a time, and still is at a time, where people are really proud to be living in Toronto. You know, it, it's kind of thanks to Drake who kind of popularized the term, the six, T-Dot, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah, yeah. six walks, yeah. that kind of thing. Yeah. So it kind of just rode that wave and really recognizing that people love to represent the city that they live in. They're proud to be locals of Toronto. And because the skylines that I created of Toronto in particular was so minimalistic, it was adaptive and versatile to like, like Phil said, those different, you know, on greeting cards, on laser edge coasters, on, um, you know, I have mobile self covers. I have the laptop decals, the wall decals, anywhere from six foot to two foot high, right down to your 13 inch laptop. So I just really experimented. It was a lot of trial. It's also on hats, sweaters, t-shirts, and really just going from there and just being creative and free with my thinking and artistic ability and just experimenting. That really, really all it was. Yeah. And just took That's it cool. from there. That's very I mean, cool. The, all, it, yeah. all it really was is, is cool. It, I mean, a lot of people might do the drawing part and starting, not too many people take it to two foot by four foot, six foot laptops, hats, shirts. So, yeah, I mean, I think you, you took it a little farther than like, you know, 99.9% .9 of the people who may have sat right. down yeah. at a park and a piece of paper. So pretty uh, remarkable. Wow. Thank you. Wow, that is pretty I, cool. Thank you. I think it was the idea as well that it was this, the idea of like falling in love with a city that really inspired me to like just keep it going because I took mm -hmm. the Toronto skyline and the design that I use on that with the Japanese inspired look with the black lines and the textured white background and then decided, you know what, what happens if I do that with New York and Paris and, and obviously like people from everywhere around the world is going to have some kind of connection to these big cities, especially if you've traveled to it and 100%. lived in it. So it just like, mm. it just recognizing that, you know, there is this uh, feeling and um, of, of wanting to take a memento home. I don't want to use the word souvenir because it sounds kind of too like, oh, um, yeah. Yeah. Well, so, it's not, yeah. It's not a souvenir. Like it's, yeah. it's, it's well past that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So now I'm doing a fill. So Phil normally does this, but <laughs> I'm doing it now. So now I'm farting around on Instagram. Yeah. I love the Paris one. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Just because I love Paris. I, I really do. I think Paris mm -hmm. is such a cool city. I've never been, but I, oh I my absolutely God. intend on going. Oh my God. The way you draw and things like that. Oh, you need to go. Oh, I love the yes. Hong Kong one too. The Hong Kong one's cool. I, 
eventually yeah, i'll be out i, I want really to travel cool. to every city that i've drawn that's the absolutely. goal absolutely <laughs> yeah it's yeah. um so it's kind of interesting so when you when you got started um you picked up some viral interest um what did you so what did you do did you do, do you know what i mean like because because part of this is kenny's right right like 99 percent of the population would go 99.9 cool like cool i, I got yeah. one viral post i'm i'm you know i'm i'm famous for an internet minute you know yes. um what did you like what did you do from there so what did you where did you go where did how did you take this like that's what i um, want to know too like how did it yeah. go from i mean again anybody not anybody tons of people do what you did tons of people draw on the scratch pads awesome yeah and they'd like phil said they post and then maybe they post another one because they like the likes and yeah, they're yeah, thinking, oh, that's yeah. pretty cool people yeah. are liking this shit and that, yeah. there's yeah. that's that's awesome but, but that yeah. doesn't necessarily translate to what you did well yeah. you know you've got a merchandising line you've got your own like seriously uh, commerce site you've got an etsy site like these are things that quite honestly most entrepreneurs struggle to get to right yeah. like you know and they or they set them up and they they wonder why nobody shows up at the site you know like all these sort of things right shit you got so, coasters yeah. pillows yeah she's got like lots of the, the moly, etch man. frames the etch Thank frames are, are super i'm loving cool. the coasters so, too yeah yeah, yeah. okay yeah. where's vancouver yes i did vancouver i have i have a lot of the canadian oh, cities actually i don't so, see vancouver i see a yeah, lot of, a lot of to no, so so you need to be on the inside this is why you've met her i see a because, lot of teal uh, here you guys yeah, i see a lot of boy, center of the universe my boy did the same thing my boy was like what the hell that's so cool and he's like wait but i'm in ottawa i want an ottawa I'm, one right so i, I messaged yes. abby and she's like yeah, yeah, I got one. Just, just tell them to message <laughs> exactly. me. <in. laughs> exactly. Try to find my city. That's the thing. Everyone has a connection to the city, like, yeah. you know, that they either yeah. grew up in, well, that exactly. they're locals of, or they've traveled to. So, I, I, first of all, like, I knew that there was something valuable and worth sharing. And second of all, like, it, it was fulfilling from my end to be able to share it. So it's kind of twofold. It's like recognizing that, you know, everyone has those connections to cities, but then mm -hmm. knowing as well, like I have a sense of fulfillment from creating these art pieces. But I wanted also, so I, I wanted to also share with you this book that I um, read at the very beginning of my journey. It's called Big Magic by Elizabeth Gilbert. Okay. And, okay. and I think when yeah, write you ask that, down, that question, yeah, Elizabeth Gilbert, Big Magic. <laughs> when you ask yeah. that question of like, how did I get to where I am? Why did I take it so far? And a big reason I think was because of this book. And she says, um, and I've got to tell you, I did do a little prep <laughs> coming onto your show because I have, like I said, trepidation. Oh my God, speaking That's publicly, funny. what am I going to do? <laughs> and I listened to a few of your podcasts and- oh, um, you. You have Tim Dumas who came. Yeah, yeah. Tim's awesome. Yeah, Tim's yeah. awesome. Great, yeah. great, great segment with Tim. And he's a leadership coach. And there's one particular quote that I know that stuck with you guys. And it definitely stuck with me when I first heard that quote. And it's the one that says, if you knew you couldn't fail, what would you do? Yeah, I love mm -hmm. that one. Yeah. But I want to yeah. twist that and say something that Elizabeth Gilbert says in her book. And I'm hoping that this will... This will floor you even more, I hope. <laughs> I know it did me because when I first heard, if you knew you couldn't fail, what would you do? I was like, oh, wow, you know, that, I'm going to wreck my brain. That's brilliant. But what Elizabeth Gilbert says is, what would you do even if you knew you might very well fail, but still continue to do? And I think that's even more powerful. It's even more profound even yeah. more profound, especially in yeah. the small business handmade world, because you're likely to fail, you know, um, there's that statistic, like something crazy, like 20 to 30% of small businesses fail within the first year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know? I, I mean, Etsy. Listen, Ken, Etsy. Kenny and I understand yeah, this I really probably like more that than one. most. We, we probably understand that more than most, because when, when we started this podcast, we laughed about it a lot, but we were, I think we were genuine about it, you know, yeah. where it was like, look, if it's just the two of us talking, because this is what we love to do and we, we love to do it together, we'll do that. Screw it. If nobody yeah. listens, right? But but I, I think that's, yeah, I'm all there. I like it. 
Yeah. I really like that one. Yeah. I, I, I will have to tell Timmy yeah. that he got thumped on his. His was good. Yeah. This is really good because I think do, it do does. Do you have encapsulate. coaching hours? Like we can offer Timmy, he can, he can come to you and get some coaching hours. I have to text him and say, buddy, you got to yeah. listen to the podcast. You're, yeah, getting, yeah. you're getting killed. Sorry, man. You got schooled tonight. But I do like, yeah. I do like that because it, 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 the first, the way, the, the way Tim's is phrase is, is really cool because it does make you think of it right? Yes. The second one is almost to the, pa- it, it's, it's truly what entrepreneurs understand because they've done it. And yeah. there were so many that, you know, the question was asked, they went and did it and they failed yes. or they didn't. And then they did it again. Exactly. And they didn't mm-hmm. learn again. And then they did it again. Yes. And then they did it again. And you're yes. thinking, I mean, what a cool the way love to- of God, man. Yeah. <laughs> but this is amazing. Well, but for most yeah, people, yeah, it yeah. is the love of God and you stop. Yeah. 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 And then there's the others that, no, I'm going to, I'm going to do this because I, 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 it's like you can Perfect. feel it like you know what yeah. I mean like you're gonna you're gonna answer that question like you know yes. if, if you if you knew what would you do like they're trying it exactly that is so it's, cool it's just recognizing that you could very well fail a hundred billion times and you know Absolutely. what you might get there you might mm-hmm. get there eventually but just just having yeah. peace with the fact that you know it's okay it's okay to fail a hundred times and I think it's a, you know I I thought again Lovely. like you know being nervous coming on to the podcast i thought again you know what people need to hear this message especially with the pandemic and like so many small businesses would have struggled throughout 2020 i'm like you know what there are gonna be some of your listeners that come on here and be like mm-hmm. hey i'm in the same boat so you know very very important message absolutely and i appreciate you guys asking me to come on and tell my story because i feel I feel inspired and I hope uh-huh. that, you know, this po- podcast will help to inspire others just hearing my story as well. I think it will. I think that your story mm-hmm. is kind of cool. You know what I want to know though? I want to sort of know. Yeah. And it's, it's what you said. So I understand the TO thing, right? You're sitting in your bedroom, you're away from home, you know, it's probably a really nice way to ground yourself in the city. I get it. I can see it. I draw it, you know, I've got a, a definite, um, a direct affinity to something. But, mm-hmm. you know, I said, you know, I love your Paris one and your comments, why well, I've never been to Paris. I'm thinking, okay, that's great. So where did the inspiration come from to do it? Like what inspires you to do? So you said before that you want to maybe travel to yes. each of the cities you draw. So is that what inspires you to draw that city? Like, was that what inspired Paris or is that later it inspired you? Like, I'm trying to figure out why you. What, why like, continue to draw the cities, the different cities? Or the different, or like even what, but I'm sh- from the beginning, was it always the intent that I'm going to draw places that I no. want to eventually go to? Or did that sort of morph in once you started thinking like, shit, this is pretty cool. I really, yeah, exactly. I'm kind of liking it, this. Definitely the latter. It just really? kind of, it was all just me fumbling and trial and error and making like discoveries and aha moments along the way and being like, wow, if, if people really love this about Toronto, they're going to have that affinity for every like, you know, city that they've traveled to or they've they've lived in and I I guess also uh twofold is that I I've always had this idea in my mind that eventually you know I do want to share my art I do want to do something creative um and put my work out there and just really racking my brain um about how I can go about doing that and so when I did the Toronto skyline and seeing that it kind of went semi-viral on Instagram and seeing that it's worth sharing, I thought, you know, where, how far can I take this, you know? And so I have this kind of like base idea right. uh, based on Toronto and, you know, the six and TJ. And so I'm like, let, you know what, let's do another city. Let's see where that goes. And, and actually the second one might've been Paris that I had done. And then the third one might've been like New York thinking right. about like the really large cities that you know for sure people are gonna love well it's iconic skylines too like everybody exactly. knows what hong iconic. kong sky like i everybody knows new york i love your new york one with, with the, the statue of liberty too i think that's thank pretty, you yeah it's very cool yeah i mean you know, it's because i've been yeah. to a lot of these cities and i'm looking yeah. i'm thinking ah yeah shit that's actually the cool I, I, I think i've been in that spot to see that city yeah, yeah. right yeah. I, I just it's the paris one i keep coming back i love the cop too like I'm actually worse than Phil tonight. I think this is the first night I've done been the, the, the disaster going and trying to look at all this stuff. I like this, man. Yeah, okay. thank so, you. So you started drawing and then, so did you start with, 
because you had drawn this on your own wall, right? So yes. how did you get to, because the, the decal process that you have and then the laser etch stuff, like the, the portraits that you, or the, uh, the picture frames, the pictures in the frames that you have are quite unique, right? Like they, they really aren't souvenirs. Um, they really are mementos, right? Because yes. they're, they're as good as, you know, everybody has a favorite picture that they took on a vacation somewhere. For wall one, art. I would know, put this just, on the wall. But, but, yeah. but no, no, but, but I think what I find really unique is everybody has one shot that they remember, like, you know, one right. shot that magically turned out perfect yes. from their vacation. Right. They kind of like, remember, you might've taken like, like Kenny and I are both like that. We'll take like thousands of shots, oh, right. When we're on vacation, tens of thousands. but there's one, right. There's always yes. one that you go, Oh my you God, want this is, this is the you. shot, right? Well, that's but, the one I remember. Like it your, resonates. Yeah. But all of your stuff is like that. So Thank where you. did you, how did you start this process? Like, so did you, did you just like, did you start with the wall stuff and then work your way through? Like, how did you get to, because commercialization is, is all about testing, right? It's almost yes. like, how do I figure out what, what sells and what doesn't well, sell? Like, right? how do you get to, how do you yeah. get from a wall in your bedroom to pillows or to a cup? Yeah, yeah, Which yeah. Which I both, like I, I'm stuff, fascinated right? by like, both of those. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think it was just by simple fact that um, it is a very minimalistic design and it just translates very well to a range of products. And the fact that it's minimalistic allows that versatility. Mm. So it's kind of, it's, it's being creative and being experimental and, and deciding like, oh, wh what will it look like on a t-shirt? What will it look like on a hat? What will it look like on, you know, if I etched it in wood, which is what I did. Mm -hmm. I literally took it to a laser artist and was like, what, what will this look like if I etched the laser Toronto skyline onto a wood canvas? And then, you know, added some, some uh, details with varnish and lacquer. And what if I found it I, I just want to point out that yeah. It would never occur to me to look for a laser artist. <laughs> I, again, though, see, but this is where it, it sort of gets discounted, right? I just, because you know, right? like, so you're kind of like, like it's, you know, like one of the most amazing things about this podcast is we get people like you, right? Um, or, and you're like them where they just kind of like drop this thing. Like, I, you know, I had an idea. I took it to a laser, you know, artist, you know, yeah. like, Colleen was like, oh, I know it's the pandemic, but I opened six physical locations. Yeah. You're like, are you insane? Like, yeah. what, like do you <laughs> even know that? where you are? Like, we, you know, we, we, um, we interviewed his episode is coming up next week, but he was the CEO of like a fortune 100, maybe fortune mm. 50 company. Mm -hmm. And he's now doing grocery, which would be like, it's the most insane thing in the world. And like all Such of you are departure. remarkable, but all of you are remarkable the same way because you're all climbing uphill and none of you think anything you of it. You don't realize it's, it's amazing. it. Like, you know, no, again, it's amazing. you go back it's, to it. 99.9, yeah. yeah. have, have it on a piece of paper in yeah. a pad. Nobody's because, thinking, oh shit, you know what I should do? I should go find a laser <laughs> artist and do this in wood because that's a logical step from sitting in the park, drawing the skyline. Like I, I get it. Exactly. Like, who does that? I, well, you know what? You probably just have a lot of creative people coming onto your podcast. And you know, that's the thing about creatives is that they think outside of the box and it's just about being experimental. And it's just having that sense of fulfillment, creating something from nothing. It, right. it really, yeah. all it is. Maybe, yeah. yeah. I, I guess so, I, I, yeah. I, I Okay, yeah, so, it's not so, that logical a jump for me. Uh, so where do you go? <laughs> so, I love it. I know it's it's not. It's, it's not, not. It's not yeah, at all. Yeah, like, actually, you, but, you made it so linear. Yeah, and I'm thinking, okay, I don't yeah. see the linear in it. Yeah, but, no, <laughs> no, I don't either. And I'm a pretty linear person. It's not like I'm a bouncy. But, you know, really, come on. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So so you go. So you start looking at different things. How? What what happens after that? Like, so do you do you test some stuff out and then do you start selling? Like, do you kind of start walking around with your stuff like where how do you how do you get how do you get through this it's, process it's funny that you say that because i i did kind of walk around with my stuff mm -hmm. i'm like hey this is my design would you like to put it on your restaurant wall yeah <laughs> i did okay. actually get it into 
uh, there was a hat boutique store uh, downtown Toronto on Queen Street. I, I don't think they're any longer there since the mm-hmm. pandemic. Were they? um, they're called Brims, B R I M Z. I remember those. I think I, I think I bought you know a hat from says, them. Yeah. So they had hats. But Brims isn't Toronto there hats. anymore. I don't think they're oh, there. That makes I think, me sad. I think that, they may have relocated. I think they, they had, had to. Like, it's been so gentrified. I mean, there's nobody left cool yeah. on that street. But I so I had my Toronto skyline on their on their front door, and they're really it, it really goes hand in hand because they're all about you know Toronto hats and the six hats as well. Mm-hmm. So um, there was that. I, you know, I kind of just like connected with small businesses and like, hey, here's a free decal for your you know for your store, um, and in exchange, you know, I basically get free marketing for my product, um, and then again, just experimenting with Etsy um, and then creating my own Shopify store. And then I did the Nooks challenge with Colleen in 2017. Um, I also had similar to the Nooks, I also had my product in the arts market in Mm -hmm. Leslieville. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Similar model to the Nooks where I rented space out. Um, And it was actually the art markets where um, Wendy Wong, the buyer from Billy Bishop Airport, had picked up my product and got in touch with me. And now I sell my product at Billy Bishop Airport. So it was just like this, this one thing led from another. And Billy Bishop, so my aspirations uh, with, with my product is to eventually be in every, like have a boutique store in every big city in the world. And so when they contacted me, I was like, oh my God, wow, this is, um, you know, they're a subsidiary of, so Hudson Group is a subsidiary of Duffery, which is like a large global travel right. retailer. They have mm-hmm. like all those duty free mm-hmm. uh, shops mm-hmm. in airports around the world. Like uh, Hudson Group has like You're five. You're a little bit closer right? to your dream than you think you are. <laughs> I hope so. The pandemic, I have to say, kind of threw me off yeah. slightly. Yeah. Um, but, but it just shuts down those ones though. But I, I like, I, yeah. yeah. So even the yeah. eight by 10 unframed stuff, right? I mean, this could go, you, you know, you could buy it in any airport in the city. What's the difference with the cities? I mean, you want to have the city that you're, that you're, yeah. that you're which in. airport it's in, but you could, these can go, these yeah. can go anywhere for that, right? Yeah. So what it, retailer are you yeah. in now? Sorry, Phil. So no, the, I, I understand you're, I, I get the Etsy. I mean, that, that makes, that makes sense. Yep, the Etsy. online is obviously that's a definitive, that's an easy peasy. Yeah. So are you in any other bricks and mortar outside of the ones we've sort of talked about? Or does anybody. Yeah, so I am in Billy Bishop. Right. I, and I'm also in uh, the Toronto general store in North York. Um, they're called uh, old school general store. Okay. Mm-hmm. So there yep. I'm on consignment. Okay. Uh, so, and I did have the Nooks and Arts Market at some point, but I've since, because of the pandemic, I've since pulled mm-hmm. it off the shelves just mm-hmm. because of the, the lease. Um, yeah. So there, there are a number of different models that I experimented with, with, with putting my products out there. It is that, you know, that model with the, uh, uh, the Arts Market and the Nooks with having a retail space right. and getting like full profits from that, having it on consignment at Toronto General Store and then selling it for wholesale at Billy Bishop Airport. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. just having all these different touch points and really experimenting with all of that and fumbling and making my way with like packaging, experimenting with wholesale pricing, you know, all these nuances with retailing that you just don't know until you do it. And you're going to fail a hundred times before you realize, oh my God, I have to go back and I have to recalculate, you know, you know, my packaging costs into my retail costs. It's just, it's a wild ride. Um, but really just, you know, I'm really grateful that I was able to at least have those different, even though I'm not, no longer with like the arts market and the nooks, mm-hmm. at least I've had that experience. And when I do start to build and get back into it, you know, I, I have that experience. I know I have that know-how and just, you know, again, doing it with all the trial and error and then all the failure and hopefully one day having my product all around the world that that's the dream i don't think you're that far away to in a large part i mean yeah again i'm I'm serious i've become phil you know the the laser cut mounted on the wood block yes pretty i mean i you know these are 
these are these are super these are really retail friendly thank you right yeah. these are you can you know what i mean feel like you can like i can see this yeah. like in I the days when it. i was with ld i mean we could yeah. do this shit like we could do this yeah. easily like london could have yeah. done this this is mm -hmm. it's, it's so easy especially the frame stuff and your prices okay here's here it comes this is going to be the, the asshole moving me because I, i'm normally good like <laughs> are you making money or what because yeah. uh you know i was cost involved here right <laughs> I was. I'm looking at the price. If you know, you're not you're not massively expensive. An eight by ten for, you know, thirty three eighty seven to forty six bucks yeah. is not um, for something outrageous. custom, right? Like something laser, right. something small. Well, that's quantity. just that's just the digital printed yeah, yeah, city yeah. line on wood yeah. frame. So yeah. you know, for for an eight by ten for under fifty dollars, mm -hmm. it's not something that you know you'd think. Oh my god, I can't do that. Yeah. Like, are, yeah. are you able to like you've you've priced this so that you can yeah absolutely i mean my my profit margins are going to vary from product to product right. so like my profit margins for example for prints are going to be a lot higher than right. something that's labor intensive mm -hmm. like the the ones where i hand finish for example yeah, so yeah. right off the bat i can tell you my profit margins are anywhere from like 20 percent up to 50 percent i'm gonna say and you know being here connecting with you guys is such a blessing because maybe even we can reconnect later and we can crunch some numbers yeah, and be I think like, we, hey, I think, I think we're, yeah. I think we're having a discussion after this. <laughs> <laughs> Just so you know, young lady, we're having a discussion. Well, I appreciate my, my, that. Uh, <laughs> custom art, 20 points. Jesus, Louises. Yeah. I got to have a little chit chat. Yeah. <laughs> well, because you, you want to, yeah, I mean, I we definitely want to talk about this, but yeah. you do, you've, you've got, um, you've got a premium product that you, you can go up on. Like, I think That's of, I'm going to, yeah, I mean, look That's like you, um, I, I use a, a, a really obtuse example, but, but it's similar is if you, if you go to any airport in the world, right, there yeah. is, um, what are they called? Those electronic stores that are in like every airport. Uh, they sell oh. the massage chairs and all that. I know which one you're talking you know, about. I right. can't think of the name. Like yeah. most Homedics, of it's, I think Homedics. Yeah, Homedics, you know, like all that kind of stuff, right? Yeah. And But the prices are exorbitant, right? Like mm. they're, they're probably three times what a normal, you know, kind of market would be. And people will pay that stuff because there's almost like a different, one is there's some affluence, right? Like, you know, like people who are traveling through airports can clearly afford to be there, most yeah. of them. Yeah. And so they're willing to pay for things. And then there's the novelty of buying something, you know, the here and now in the moment when they're traveling, right? So yes. um, so you being in like Billy Bishop, you know, it's, it's one of those things where like, this is a a memorable memento that would fit into any bag. Like, I, I feel like there's mm. room. Don't you think, Kenny? Like, I think this is where you're going too, right? It's like, 100%. I'm looking at this going, this is this is like, like for the price that you are charging now, I'd probably be able to get like a cheap cotton, the six t-shirt. Do you That's know what, what I mean? Was like, go with, yeah, yeah. The last time, yeah, this shirt, not the last time, this any, any of these shirts, <laughs> this really. Hawaii Kinda shirt well, exactly. was probably like twenty five, twenty six dollars at the airport, right? Like, yeah. Yeah. But, but, I, but you're cool, offering, man. but you're, you're offering like a a memorable memento, yeah, that will not get worn. You know, like I'm wearing it now, but like another year from now, it'll be a pajama shirt. Yeah, mm -hmm. do you know so what I mean? You, especially when yeah. you're limited, like this is not in wide scale, and this is yeah. your. I'll give you an example. I mean, this is probably about seven, eight years ago when yeah. I used to go to Toronto two, three times a year. We were in Kensington Market somewhere. And I can't remember if it's that, I don't know if it's called a blue something, some building. It had all the, it's like the, the consignment building there. Okay. But there's a whole okay. bunch of t-shirt guys too. And one of the places, I think it was the Toronto Motorcycle Company was called. I okay. think that's what he was. And he did t-shirts, right? Mm -hmm. And I looked at it and I thought, fuck, this thing is so cool, man. Like it's, it was a, I just loved it. Had the cool bike on the front, but like in sort of the stick form you did. I think I paid like fucking 50 bucks for that. It didn't bat an eye. You know why? Yeah. Nobody in Vancouver was going to have that shirt. Like mm. nobody. And the amount of times I walked through the city and people comment, and that was short sleeve shirt, less material than your $35 long sleeve, mm. which should be like 60 bucks, by the way. <laughs> That's what I'm looking at. Like Phil, I'm thinking like a hoodie. 55 bucks for a hoodie. That's like, 
I know. Come on. The, the, the shirt, the shirt, the, the long sleeve shirt that I bought was a great deal. Like it was 35, 20 is cheap. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, you can say whatever you want. Yeah. That's cheap. Yeah, Except yeah. it only comes in Toronto, which I'm still not understanding, but that's okay. <laughs> find the Vancouver. I saw it. I don't see it on a lot of things, my dear. I'm just going to point listen. that out. You but, can but this is, you can this is, this yeah. is a opportunistic moment, right? Like Kenny already knows that he should pay, be paying 60 bucks for one of those shirts. So I'm just saying. I, I, would, pay, I would pay 50 I'm, bucks for the shirt. I'd probably pay 75 for the hoodie though. Oh, nice. Like, this, does, sure. this is, this is she'll, she'll ship you ears. one right after this. Go ahead and just transfer her money. And then she'll, she'll just ship you one out. You know what? Honestly, it. you're not, you're not, yeah, you're not expensive. I mean, 27 mm. bucks for a short sleeve t-shirt. Like seriously. Mm. Mm. Well, thank you. Yeah. I, I, I have rejigged my prices. And like I said, it's all been trial and error. I really mm. have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> mm. No, that's not fair to say, young lady. You definitely no, know no, what you're doing. Yeah, you know you may need to tweak a few yeah. things. Yeah. But that's just yeah. because, you know, we come from a, a different world. Mm. Right. And we but, price but, differently because we were always looking yeah. at. Mm. But you your know. intentions are in there too. Like, so, so Kenny I and I talked that. about this with another um, brand too is, it depends on what you intend to do, right? Like, so, so once once you're clear with us, like we heard you loud and clear, you want to be in, you know, kind of every airport around the world. Yeah, that's why I asked about the marketing. Like, but but that's the why the marketing questions, right? Mm-hmm. Because, yeah. because if you wanted to do this and you said to us, listen, like, I love doing what I do and it kind of like pays all the bills and, and like based on what I do here, I can travel. We'd probably not ask you again about margin, right? Because no, you're, you're, you know, you're doing what you want to do, right? Like business isn't all about like, I've, I've got to crush them I've got to make 200% yeah. on everything. Yeah. Um, it is, you know, it is about what you want as well. Right. So exactly. but once we heard that, Hey, you, you want to be in airports around the world that kind of changes things, right? Because you mm. do, you kind of want to charge like what the special moment is worth. Mm. You got to charge what even what the commodity's worth. Uh, unfortunately, mm. like I know people are going to listen to this and they, and they do know it. But the reason that hundred dollar dress or shirt or pair of jeans, whatever it is, can go down to twenty five dollars and the retailer still make money and the mm. manufacturer still make money is because they build in margins in clothing of, you know, 60 to 80. Mm. That's what clothing has to be, because you have to be ready to seasonally get out fashionably get out now your stuff's a little different it's probably not like if i'm a store i'm not panicked about the uh you know the the it's toronto season. airport with mm-hmm. the with the um upc i can probably hang on to it for two years and not panic right but right. i still would not go out less than probably 50 60 margin mm-hmm. on that alone because i'd be thinking you know if they want to put it on special i got some room i can help them or they can they've got room like you got to have some play in it right yeah, because your stuff exactly. is really nice. It's not. It's it's nice looking. Mm-hmm. I'm assuming just by the little talking to you, I'm sure the quality is decent. Mm-hmm. I know mm-hmm. Chang won't buy anything unless it's decent quality. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> you know, I mean, you 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 know, people people will pay for that, and you don't have to be a bandit. Like you know, we're we're probably you don't have to go crazy until yeah. it fills point. I understand. As soon as you said you wanted this, this, and this, I thought, okay, I got to ask her the margins because mm-hmm. I looked at the prices and I think and. I don't know if she's getting this stuff made, but all I'm listening to, this is not, you know, some um, sweatshop in Bangladesh that's cranking out shirts a mile a minute. So I'm thinking, okay, there, you know, yeah, yeah. I, I, I know clothing. You, you can't, you can't be making seventies and eighties at these yeah. regions. Okay. So you're, you're saying going from 20 to 30 to 50 up to 60 to 70. Margin. Unfortunately, clothing, yeah. most clothing is probably between 50 and yeah, I mean, 60 to 80 is not going to be in the world. You know, you buy, you make a shirt for a buck and a quarter and you sell yeah. it for 10. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's reality. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now I get well, there's discounters yeah. and stuff all over. I get all that, yeah, yeah. but that's clothing because at the end of the day, you may have to blow it out at $5. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. So you can't be, if you're too tight, you're just going to lose money all the time when you're trying to move it out again your stuff is a little cooler and probably has a longer life. I don't think there's a lot of seasonality in YYZ with a, a, a barcode. Yes, exactly. Right. I mean, that's got longevity, mm-hmm. but still. Mm-hmm. You know. but, you, but you think of that too. And you think like, so I don't know how the conversation with the buyer went, right? Because she loved yourself. She saw your stuff, but mm-hmm. even there, 
you, you kind of don't want to sweat in that conversation, right? Like, cause you know, the buyer yeah. is going to want what they want, right? Is, is, um, it's what they're supposed to do. She probably said to you, listen, like I I've got to be able to make X number margin on your product, you know? And then, so if you're not in that range, right. Then you, mm-hmm. you have a strategic conversation with yourself. Of like, um, you know, how worth it is it for me to be in here? Maybe I lose a couple of bucks or, I won't make as much as I thought I would, but I got to make it up somewhere else. Mm-hmm. Now, fast forward that and think, let's go modest and say, you know, um, this gets picked up by Pearson, by LaGuardia. Just get Hudson News by, North America. You, now you're you know, in every airport in North America. Now yeah, we yeah. Yeah. But, but imagine having those and then sweating your way through a bunch of those conversations going, well, shit, now I'm in every airport, but I, you know, when we're all said and done, I'm only making 10 points on each product. So now what happens if half of those airports, right? You know, cause yeah. this happens even when you're successful is half the airports go, listen, this, this stuff isn't moving. Like, do you want it back? Or can we discount it? it? Back? What? You know, like, you know, you're going to get it back. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they don't ask you. How, I, how do you I feel think, today? I'm trying to, I'm trying <laughs> Stop to being go nice. a little that's bit me. easier on her. Like, holy. forget but, it, man. But, but COVID that's hits. what a buyer, that's what a buyer would sound like. They would go, I'm right. sending this shit back. Mm-hmm. Like, where do you want to send then, to? And then your, your, you know, comeback would be like, whoa, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> just yeah, a minute. Right. I don't have like, I don't have that much garage space for it. Mm-hmm. Let's put it on sale. But now you're thinking mm. I only got 10 points of margin. Fuck. Right. Now what right. do I do? Now I'm going to lose money. Account for that. So Absolutely. I'll, I'll give away right. all 10 right off the get go. Yeah. But what happens if they go, well, yeah, I sold half, but let's, let's drop it another 10 points. What are you going to do? Go. I can't do that. Right. Yeah. Like, you know then what I mean? Fine. Like What's now your you're address? in this really tough spot, right? Like now do I take all the inventory back and now what do I do with it? Do mm-hmm. I lose money on every piece that goes out? Cause now I'm cutting a check and not getting anything back. Like, yeah. you know, so, right. um, so yeah. that's kind of what we're after is like, you, you got to build. Enough but that room. is the reality. Like COVID yeah. hit and airports stopped. Yeah, so you're, exactly. you're, you're, you're there. Let's say you're the Hudson room and you're thinking, I'm sitting all this inventory. Uh, my traffic's mm-hmm. down eighty or ninety percent. Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. not a matter. Hey, Ave, what do you want to do? do you, would you like me to mark it down? You know what they're going to do, Ave? Can you have can you send me your address because you're getting the shit back? Uh, ASAP. <laughs> yeah. I haven't had that happen yet with Billy. Bridget, no, you won't God. because your stuff's a little different. But you got to anticipate that so mm-hmm. that, yeah. that, like Phil said, that you can stop the conversation. Say, listen, I'll give you fifty percent markdown. Let's just yeah. move it out. Yeah, the ten percent that are there hopefully will be motivated and at that point because your margins were in the 60s 70s and 80s you've got room it, yeah, but when you're on the light that. side yeah you're yeah. basically phoning your bank and say listen i need 30 grand to basically right. give to this yeah. retailer because yeah, i see you know yeah. that's I that's guess, well, that's why right i guess me as like kind of this novice entrepreneur fundling my way i kind of like googled you know wholesale prices versus retail and you get like that calculation of wholesale times two equals recommended retail price and yeah. that's kind of like you know the base that you i kind of hate off, that equation yeah. actually yeah you do okay that's yeah. good well that math works that it math works. is okay when you're talking wholesale but what what yeah. what calculation did you use to get from your cost to the wholesale right that's, that's the problem the, right because right. the other way that, the other calculation yeah if you multiply cost by two that's a 50 margin for the retailer no big yes. deal yeah most if retailers are cost that yeah, right. no big deal. Yeah, if yeah. You but if your wholesale yeah. cost is wrong, yeah, then it's yeah. a train wreck, right? Yeah. But yeah. Uh, yeah. otherwise, multiplying your wholesale by two for retail is the smart way to do it, okay. provided okay. your wholesale's right. Yeah, right. right? A twenty-point wholesale but, but they don't, they doesn't don't include work. That in the description, right? They just, no, you know. Like yeah. Always, yeah, yeah. You got to kind of go backwards and figure out. Yeah. Always, yeah. always start and... start from retail, yeah. and then you go back. Yeah. And on something like this, when you do that. You've got to make sure that by the time you get to the last wholesale, maybe it's a distributor that gets in the way before the retailer, you got to leave yourself that 50, 60, 70 mm. so that you can function mm. without having to literally phone the bank and say, listen, I need to borrow money because I got to give it to a retailer. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Because they yeah. need to mark something down. I mean, that's, mm. that is, that's not what you want to do. Especially yeah. your stuff is you're honestly like without, you yeah. know, I mean, people will it's see so the, the web page. Your shit really. is cool. Like it's thank you. Really like Phil's that. Phil's laptop because we did the meeting at my house and there was ten of us I think on the on the busiest day, maybe eleven, yeah. and everybody complimented it. 
Oh, nice. And commented on it, right? I mean, seriously, yeah. because it's pretty cool. Thank and it's not you. something you see. I don't see it everywhere. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right? I like it. I think, yeah, I mean. I Good, know, you can't have cool, mine. Man. <laughs> well, I can't have one from Vancouver either because I notice it's not available. <laughs> no, no. Vancouver. There is Vancouver. a special pricing. Just yeah. a minute. Don't talk, hey. Abby. Hey. Don't talk, hey. Abby. Hey. There's, There's a, a special price. There. Bullshit. There's a special price. <laughs> you just need to email her and then she'll take her cost times three and then hey. give you. <laughs> Abe, Abe is going to be really nice. Abe is going to be Doing just like Abe Maria and she's going to be the saintly that. person that she is. She's named after a very important person. She's going to be nice oh, on this one. Don't fall for it. It's mm. divinity. Exactly. <laughs> you got to be careful with that name. You got a lot of pressure on you to make sure you do the right things. I know, right? I know, right? Exactly. <laughs> I've got to take this business somewhere just purely by the name. <laughs> oh, exactly. You've, you've got you've got a whole group of cool people above us behind you. <laughs> take that one and run. Oh, that's that's awesome. awesome. Seriously, very cool, my dear. Yeah, like, seriously. this is very cool. Yeah. Thank you so yeah. much. I, I yeah, I appreciate your input. Neat. I, I think I just need to, you know, reconnect with my artistic, not just my artistic side, but my entrepreneurial side. Listen to all your podcasts, get inspired. Ah, you can just call us. Just call yeah. us. Yeah. Give you yeah, a call. Yeah. 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 If yeah. you want to listen to them, that's fine. We'd love that. But yeah, just call us. Oh, so fantastic. so what what next for you? So you're coming, this pandemic thing is uh I hopefully over. Knock on wood. Mm. I think we're coming out of it. We're we're finding a a a different regularity to it, right? Like, yeah. I, I don't know if normal exactly. is the right word, but we, we have a new sense of what the reality looks like. What's, what's next for you? So for me right now, in this point in my life, I am focusing on my interior design career. So I have mm-hmm. an architecture background and then coming to Canada kind of rather than architecture, because it does go hand in hand with the idea of home decor pieces um but and and i am kind of in a temporary hiatus with everything going on with ave maria bell designs and with the pandemic kind of throwing a spanner in the works um working with a startup company at the moment with my interior design career they're they're Mm -hmm. developing an interior design software that uses ai technology to automatically populate your space in your home renovation project so right now that's my focus we've just soft okay. launch okay still just still absolutely cool. doing ave maria bell designs yeah in my Super spare cool. time yeah um and just really going from there i'm going to definitely do the touch points with the billy bishop airport and toronto general store and you know my etsy and my shopify are still running um and making my way through that and connecting with you guys and being inspired to do more. <laughs> I think I think you're doing a lot of really cool things. Really yeah, do. I think, think it's so. really, I think it's really cool. Yeah, thank yeah, you yeah. so much. Really cool. That's yeah. awesome. Um, really cool. Okay, so if people want to find you, what's the best place to find you? Best place to find me: AveMariaBell.com. Um, okay. For Instagram, AveMariaBell.designs. Like I said, I have been in a hiatus, but my first Instagram post in six months will be, hey, check out this commerce life with Phil Chang and Kenny. Uh, awesome. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Awesome. We love it. We love that'll it. Really good. That'll yeah, be my segue really into this is what I'm doing right now. So yeah. yeah thank yeah, you yeah. so much for having me on. I no, our pleasure. Thanks, Thanks for, for coming. coming. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This is awesome. Yeah. yeah. I love what you guys are doing. Keep doing Thanks. what you're doing. And thank you. Exactly what. Thank Elizabeth you. Gilbert says, even though you fail a hundred times, you know. Well, you hopefully we don't fail at all, but but <laughs> yeah. somewhere along or, the or way. Or much we'll, more. We'll, we'll... Or much more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and the same with you. Like, I think you need to, yeah. I think you need, you've got a really cool thing here. Like, I think you can do, yeah, Thank having you. fun with it. Like, play with this. I mean, I think this is pretty, it's pretty slick, right? It's it's really nice. It's It lends well to Man, you got a home decor thing. You start plopping this shit into it, like yeah, yeah. There's this is yeah, this is. I, a, really, I like it. Like, I can I like, see this in so many places, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank home you. sense and all of them. Well, and hopefully, so in every many city in the world. In you every... know, the, I think the really neat thing too for me is the like the wall. 
like the wall decals are so cool, but I, I feel like because you do such a good job of framing them in your photos mm-hmm. that it's probably, I like, I don't know if you get that, but I feel like people need help to figure out how to, you know, be able to put these up properly. Mm. Like not just like apply them, but actually- No, but how to frame them. How do I stage the room properly? Right. Like, mm. I, right. I want one of these, where do I put right. it, right? Like, where do I get the maximum impact out of it? Does it look nice here? Does it look nice there? And it it feels like the interior design stuff you're doing, maybe- This is I where it helps. That's what you're after, but I think that's exactly. where it helps, yeah. right? Because exactly. Phil, it's funny you say that. When I yeah. look at it, I look at it and think it's cool. And then I go right to the picture frames. Why? Because it's yeah. super easy for me. Because it's manageable. Exactly. Yeah. And I can yeah. put this beside, like you guys, you know, the one in the Paris yeah. shot I did in the house with yeah. the water log. I yeah. can put this Paris next to that Paris. Yeah. yeah. Like I can do things like that, but I see, yeah. I can see that when I look at the wall art, I'm thinking oh the same. Okay. Like how do I frame the room yeah, properly? Like, yeah. like the, the black like, mall with the white decal is fucking just, it's slick, yeah. but, but, but even that gray Lord, wall, how do I pull that named. off? Right. Yeah. I can't like, do like, How do I, you know, like I, I can imagine halfway through that Kathy going, what are yeah. you doing? Right. Like, <laughs> <laughs> what were you thinking? Put it back, right? You're like, yeah. oh, like but it's supposed to look so yeah. cool. It really, yeah. Thank you for saying that, Phil, because it really is about the staging. It's it really totally is, is about yeah. the how it looks in the interior design setting. Yeah, and it has to fit the room. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And like I said, I was inspired by Japanese architecture and I really love the fusion of Scandinavian and Japanese interior right. design, mm-hmm. which they call Japandi. And I feel like, That's you know, awesome. my designs would Japan. like Japan. <laughs> yeah, Japan. I love it. I love that. Japan. That's awesome. It but was... I can I can see what that is too. Again, yeah. very clean lines, bold lines. That precisely love natural it. materials, natural textures, neutral palette. Neutral see, my palette. tattoos are all that way. See, they're all traditional. They're all fat nice. bold lines. Mm. Love it. That's art love right it. there. <laughs> I love it. Love it. See, the only art that I could really do, I could do the coasters and the wall pictures. I'm good at that. The decals, I'd be, I'd have to do the whole room to be a train wreck. <laughs> yes. Coasters would be easy. I just put them out. I'm, I'm done. I, I can it's, do that one all by myself. It's all about composition and texture and color and lighting. It's, it's, yeah, exactly. It's like shooting a picture, except yeah, the, it's yeah. the decor. I, I'm yeah, it's yeah. I, see, I, I know my room when it looked that way. The pictures I could do, but yeah, this is really good. Yeah, Thank really cool. you. Great. Really Thank cool. you for joining us. This is amazing. Thank you for having me. Oh my God. And anytime. Yeah. Are you guys See, was... on Instagram? I'll tag you on Instagram or I'll. We are. This commerce life is actually an Instagram. We would you love are. it if you tagged us there. Yeah. yeah Fantastic. Yeah, yeah. I'll yeah. put a link to your yeah. Spotify and, you know, everywhere you. you listen to podcasts. I'll make sure I'll, <laughs> I'll put word out there for you guys too. That's sweet. Thank Thanks. you. I appreciate yeah, it. You're Thanks. welcome. Your, your episode will come out in two weeks. Sounds good. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks, Abby. Awesome. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, stay in touch. Let us know. Yeah, what stay in touch because I would love to know that now yeah. that you're getting more inspired and maybe you're trying some different things, maybe we'll have you yeah. back on in the new year, see how things yeah. are going, where you're up yeah, to. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate right. that. You see guys will site. get a call from me. Absolutely. See if awesome. These are my numbers. Up. How do I margin them yes. correctly? Oh, that's, yeah, that, that you can do anytime <laughs> you yes. want. Yes, yes. That would be happy. I love it. Yeah, that would be happy to do that for you. That'd be our pleasure. Thank you. Awesome. Okay. Thank you. Have a great evening. Have a good night. Nice Bye. meeting you. Ciao, ciao. Bye. Very cool, Mr. Chang. That was cool, right? Yeah. yeah. You know what it cool. is? It's, it's, again, it's not, it's so stupid. It's nothing massively complicated per se. And yet it just, I don't know, something about, I, I, I've got this stupid Honestly, page open the whole time. It's, I'm it's never so the one special, that does this. Like it's, it's so special because um, really, I, I think of that. Every time I see your stuff, I think, like I've got one shot from Hawaii that I keep. Yeah. because it was the one shot that really turned out that kind of like makes me think of Hawaii every time. Yeah. And like her stuff is like that, right? It's like, you see it and all of the etch stuff. Like I love the decal on my laptop. Like, I just love it. Like, I love that one know? too. You know what it is? Yeah. I just, and her Vancouver one's cool. You know why? Like she got yeah. the Burrard street bridge. She got the five sales downtown. Like yeah. she, she's actually, yeah. um, Yeah. And again, I, I I just love how people I love how people discount what they do, like for literally ninety nine point nine 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 leave it on the piece of paper yeah. in the notepad, which is wonderful. And that's no you don't nobody yeah. you don't have to commercialize everything, yeah right. But you know what I mean? It's not normal to do what she did. It's just not. Mm-hmm. I mean, most people would just draw and be very happy, or maybe share with a few friends, maybe maybe. But you know, 
to go into pillows coasters like seriously i know All right i know it's so cool the new and york one is too cool low. she's priced with way the too low. statue of liberty and the birds i love the flying. statue with the birds flying it's awesome yeah, it's it's freaking but she's priced too low she really is yeah it's she not really, it's not really priced uh, like it's, yeah. it's not a uh, like no even the wood like i think i think i figured that out in the wood frames right like the, wood, the clothing yeah. the clothing is like okay whatever meh right like so she's a little bit under she could be more but the wood frames is where i kind of went like yeah they're, they're not yeah, uh yeah like a laser cut laser cut toronto new york skyline mounted on a wood block for 85 bucks i think on the high like, side one of them was 120 i'm thinking whatever i mean no, you're not yeah, yeah it's yeah. it's not um yeah it's it's not priced properly it's it's no. it's cheap right yeah and it shouldn't be because it's stuff is it's really no no it's really memento especially that the wood very, one like the wood one yeah. is like yeah. fucking cool man like it yeah. is pretty slick it is, it is it's that one cool. with the new york is really cool yeah 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 i see i could yeah. do this in my i'm gonna run out of wall space in my office but i could you know what i'm gonna do i think i need to get the laptop one yeah, 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 yeah. I do the Vancouver skyline on it. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 But see, but I mean, like, like I like the Hong Kong because I, I loved Hong Kong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I really did. I know. It's uh, anyway. She was very cool. I, I really. Yeah, I like it. I like, you know, liked it a lot. I, I like. Yeah. I like. No, I think it's pretty, so. pretty neat. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Very cool. Very yeah. cool. Awesome. Awesome. Dude. That's it, man. That's it. That's what's going on. That's it. I got nothing more for you. No, me neither. Me neither. I'm gonna um, watch some Ted Lasso, baby. I know. Me too. Yeah. For for any listeners that are Kenny and I are now, I love with it, Ted man. Ted Lasso. I love it. Uh, it's it's Mark Sterling's fault. I'll I'll say that right now. He he's although he's not a fan. Now. He's not now. Well, he's, listen, I, he's I, downplaying it now. But but when I when we I met with know. him, he couldn't stop talking about Ted Lasso. He was just he was. I don't remember him saying anything. So I'm telling him today, like really? I found it. No, seriously. No, I I looked it up because of him actually. And then and then he just disses it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's just that's rude. Mark, though. That's, yeah, you gotta set the bar low, you know, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Um, anyway, Chang. So listen, thank you again for doing this podcast with me. I really appreciate the time you spend with me. <laughs> I'm glad you you give up an hour every Stop week. I really so really enjoy weird. it. Weird. So thank you we and thank you to here. all our guests for joining us tonight. <laughs> That's for Sterling. Uh, I'm stopping jackass. the recording. I tell you know what for Linda, I don't care if I get fired. Go ahead. Oh, See what give it a try, baby. Oh, give it a try. Hey, yeah. hey, oh, all right, right. Yeah, uh, you want to play that game? I play Good that game. Lord.